the, the Zone Fight Night. I'm once again joined by Elliot Stott of ESBR Boxing. Um, in this video, we're going to react to last night's action with obviously the disappointing main event in Lara Warrington 2. Um, so we'll just get we'll just get going. Uh, just before we start, though, we do do these videos every single week, previews and reviews. So if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe now. Um, it doesn't cost anything and it just means you won't miss a video. Um, so Elliot, we'll, we'll just get straight into it. Obviously, the main event was built up to be this big spectacle, big Warrington getting his revenge. And obviously, we had the head clash in the, at the end of the second round. Uh, how much weight can we put into, into those two rounds that we saw? Um, a little bit, in my opinion. Um, I think it's unfair to say, oh, this fight would have won, this would have happened, because we've seen, what, less than a quarter of the fight. Uh, but yeah, it was, that's, I think, for me, the disappointing thing is not the fact that the fight got stopped. It's the fact that it was clearly going to be a really good fight. You know, if this happened in, you know, one of the on the undercards at kind of for undercard fights 6 p.m., nothing really would have been said about it. Mm. But yeah, when it's when we know what sort of fight it was going to be and how it was going to be, and it was a genuine, genuine 50 50 fight, um, it's frustrating. I'm not going to like say what yeah I'm not going to contradict myself and say what I think would have happened but I thought Lara Lara looked confident and dangerous so we'll see that doesn't mean he would have won but I think he clearly hits very hard for for, for the for the weight yeah and I think if you put in and give weight to the the first fight as well and then the two rounds that we saw I think those added together kind of as much as we can and obviously Warrington in his home hometown home crowd like he could have easily come back and and done quite well but the way Lara was landing in those first two rounds like it did kind of make me think as well like you that it was kind of the right and was already a little on the wall I wouldn't say it's a definite and obviously we can't say that who knows it is boxing at the end of the day um obviously it does feel a bit I think the overarching emotion after last night is disappointment I know it does feel like we're a little bit stagnated now um do you want to see uh Lara Warrington three I know Laura's probably going to be out for six six months at least with that kind of cut. That's what it's yeah. That's what's what that's what it sounds like. Um, I do want to see it because it's a great fight, and it sounds like that's the fight that Warrington wants. And you understand it. He's had a great career and had a lot of fights, and he's the only one he's not he's he's not beaten. But from a Josh Warrington perspective, I just feel like it's a really good opportunity to not have the third fight. And I'm not saying he's, he would kind of bottle it or, you know, refuse refuse the third fight. I just, I imagine he'll have management, trainer, other people in his team saying to him, no, let's let's go a different route. Let's win a world title again. Let's have a rematch against Kid Galahad, fight against Lee Woods, um, move up in weight, become two-weight world champion, go to America. There's so many things he that he can do. And you've got a question like Josh Warrington might have, say, two, two and a half years left, possibly. Does he really want to wait around six months for a third fight with Mauricio Lara for a non-title in a fight he doesn't need to do? So I do want to see it, yeah. And I think it would be a great fight again, but I'm not sure. I'm not convinced it will do. I'm not sure it makes sense for Warrington's career to go after a to go after a third fight. See, like I kind of disagree slightly. I think there is a spot on Warrington's career if he doesn't beat Lara, because there is that one guy who's kind of got the better of you. We still don't know like if Warrington would have won if he can win. And if he can beat Lara, does Lara just have the better of, of Josh Warrington? We don't know. And for me, even if he beats Kid Galahad and beats Lee Wood, beats Michael Conlon, whoever you put in front of him, I do still think that there still would be, for me personally, a spot on his career just because is Lara the better fighter? And I think if there is a third fight, I don't want to see it in Leeds. I want to see it potentially in America where... Maybe Lara has a bit more of a, a support. Obviously, last night it was it was what you expected, and I think he handled that quite well. I know, like he had stuff thrown at him in the ring walk, and and the way he kind of like managed that was was very impressive for me. I think that's what part of what I took away from that fight. He he didn't kind of phase him, whereas a lot of people going into that kind of environment like would probably get a bit phased. Um, but for me, he looked composed, he looked calm, uh, and he kind of embraced it. So if there is a third fight, which I, I think Warrington needs more than Lara um, in a weird kind of way, um, I'd love to see it in America. Um, and I think it's a good chance. I know someone commented actually on, on the preview, and I thought it was actually a really good 
um, comment about at what point do we like take Warrington away from Leeds and stop saying like, oh, he lost to Laura because he wasn't in Leeds. He didn't have the fans. They didn't have the home crowd. Like at a certain point, he's going to have to go to America if he wants to be seen as the top featherweight guy. And he's going to have to go to America or go to how impressive would it be if he went to Lara's backyard, even Mexico or um, in the in the US, in Texas, maybe and and beat him like that would completely like stop all the the naysayers. Yeah, you never you never you never know. I think a fight in America would be good. And I know that he he's wanted to do that and he wants to bring kind of fans that support him in Leeds to Hmm. to America. Um, And yeah, like I just think that. I just think that I think it's not a case of him not wanting the fight. It's just, and you're right, there will be always that point about it, about his career. But one point I'd also make is that could they not perhaps knock, this is maybe a silly comparison, but you know when Fury Wilder fought the first fight, mm. it was a draw, and then they didn't do the immediate rematch. They both had fights in between just to, A, kind of fight other guys, win other fights, and B, kind of marinate the rematch. Mm. I wonder if that's a possibility and that makes sense with this one. Maybe Josh Warrington could have could, could have a fight and try and win a world title in the division or have a big domestic fight. And then maybe Lara has another fight on a match from show early next year. And then next summer, perhaps they, they do have that third fight, by which time it's even bigger. Both fighters kind of had a win on the record. It's one thing about Warrington, he's not He's not. He's not one of. He's not. He's not kind of want to fight for a long time now. Mm-hmm. I think he like. He's just wants. I think he needs to have that winning feeling, again, and he might not have it against Lara in a third fight in six months' time. And therefore, like it's like, well, what happens now? You've not won a fight for a long time, and that's three fights in a row. You either lost or the fight's not been finished. Not down to his fault, but yeah, it's a it's a tricky one. And it's and it's really it's really interesting. But I I wouldn't mind betting that in this stage of his career he can't afford to just kind of wait around for someone's cut to get better when there's other big fights out there and that fight is could yeah. still be down there later in the line my only problem is like my worry about this is there is kind of murderers rowing in the featherweight division at the moment like there isn't really many easy fights unless you take like a like a guy outside the top 10 um i know the kid galahad fight is the one that's being talked about and kid galahad was there last night he wants that fight but for me, like if you're Josh Warrington, that Laura Warrington three is kind of dead if you lose to Galahad. Like, yeah. And then where do you go? Like you back, like you've had three fights without a win then, and and you kind of look in. Mm. Where do you go from there? So, it it depends what Warrington wants to do and how he feels, I suppose. Because would a six month break be be that bad? Um, maybe not. It it depends where his head's at. I think in in terms of like whether he thinks he still can beat Lara or whether he wants to go in another direction. Um, obviously, we'll probably move on now to the to the, um, the co-main event, which was Katie Taylor in another uh, unanimous decision victory. Um, there's been a lot of talk, I think, in the build-up and, and after last night about Katie Taylor regressing. What do you make of, of that comment? Um, I think that that's a possibility, but at the same time, it was the dominant performance last night. Mm. Uh I think I, th- I don't think anyone really knows if she's regressing or not. I think it would make sense if she is. She's of a certain age now. She's been around even in the pro game for a f- for for a few years. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's it's a tough it's a tough one. I just think that the fights against the second fight against Delphine Basu and the fight against Natasha Jonas were very very close fights. And I just think that I think that what's key for me is that there are there are a couple of very tough fights out, out out there for her. Um Chantel Cameron being one of them. Um and I think there are real question marks over whether she'd win that fight. And I think the biggest question mark is does she want that fight against does she want that fight against Chantel Cameron? Does she want the fight against the other fighters at 140? Or is she gonna I don't want to say continue fighting likes Jen of Hand because she's not always fought that level of competitors, but is she going to basically go freeze your fights? over the next couple of years and then retire. Uh, who knows? But it's, 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 it's an interesting one, but I think it's, I think it's hard to say to say whether she is truly regress, progressing or not. I don't think there's any clear, clear evidence to, to do suggest that. Yeah. And she has beaten and Jennifer Hand was a world champion. Like I know it was at two, two weight classes below, but she's still like a top uh, female fighter. And I do think 
obviously Chantel Cameron's tied up now for for the next two fights with the uh, the uh, tournament that they announced this week. So I think the Amanda Serrano fight. I think there will be a lot of disappointment if that fight isn't made next. Obviously Serrano got the win on the uh, Jake Paul undercard, and now. Katie Taylor wins a week after, so their kind of timelines, and they both won quite convincingly, so their timelines kind of match up now, where we are at a point where Katie Taylor's not, like, getting any younger, and if she wants to kind of stop the the people saying she's regressing and, and stop these comments, whether she cares or not, I, I don't know, but um, it's kind of to fight Amanda Serrano and beat Amanda Serrano, because not one person will say you've regressed if you beat Amanda Serrano, especially in the way Serrano has looked recently. I agree. That's 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 the big fight, and I just think, as boxing fans, for someone of that kind of stature, when it gets to this stage of their career, you want you want the leg you want the legacy fights, mm. and especially in women's boxing, where the kind of the list of big name opponents is limited. Um, yeah, Amanda Serrano would be massive. Uh, whether it happens or not, who knows? Who knows? But um. But no, but that's that, that's the big fight, and yeah, we'll see. It would be it would be hugely British boxing if that, yeah, you know, if that were to if that were to, if that were to take place. So I don't see why it can't happen, but you don't, you don't yeah, you don't really know. Yeah, I think in an ideal world, you'd probably have two fights with Serrano because I can't see it just having one, and then maybe the Chantel Cameron fight for the the undisputed if she wins that tournament again. I think, and then maybe you go off into the sunset as arguably the or probably then definitely the greatest women's fight of all time mm. um so then we'll just move on quickly to to Conor ben obviously he had a good test against uh, adrian granados um coming away with a pretty convincing unanimous decision victory um do you feel like for me i i felt like this in in the build-up but this was kind of like a really good matchmaking and kind of what Conor ben needed a little bit as well i'm not sure why it got moved from from 12 rounds to 10 but to get 10 rounds in the bank and against a, a tough, tough opponent who's been there with the best. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not sure why it won't get moved from 12 to 10 either. It's a bit of a, bit of a strange one, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, he, he has fought good opposition and he's been around a little while now, but he is still a young fighter and for a young fighter to get 10 rounds against good opposition, as you said, is, is, is valuable. That's, hmm. and that's great. And that will benefit from that. And as good as the Samuel Vargas performance was, I'd question how much you benefit from blowing someone out inside what, like a minute, minute and a half. Yeah. And if the same thing had happened, then you're in a point where he's had, he's gone last seven, eight months and he's barely, he's not gone past around and that's not really good for anyone. And then you mm-hmm. can come up against someone who's a serious competitor and you can kind of become unstuck because you've not really been, not really had that much in, um, in ring time. Um, yeah. Like I thought it wasn't, a, I don't think it was a, perfect performance and I don't think we'll be looking back at the end of his career and saying like that was a great that was a great fight that was a great performance but like he got the job done and look I'm sure he'll look back and understand where where he needs where he needs to improve and I thought he looked a bit a bit too wild at times and a bit too much like he wanted to scrap a bit too much but no but it was good it wasn't too much I think he won I think I gave him Granados one round to be honest that's impressive. Like over over ten rounds to win nine of them against a fight like Granados. That's that, that that's impressive. Needs credit for that. Um, I just wonder if it was maybe a bit of a a bit of a reality check, and I don't mean that in a harsh way because he's gone from knocking Sammy Vargas out in a round, who's a good fighter as well, to not knocking Granados out when I think a lot of people perhaps ex- perhaps expected him to. And I think it's maybe a case where Conor Ben he is a very good fighter, but. You know, he wouldn't beat Terence Crawford tomorrow. He wouldn't beat Errol Spence. I think we all, we all know that. Yeah. So it's just about managing correctly now. And the cases when I'm interested when they kind of take that plunge into a big, big fight. I'm interested when that. I'm interested to see when that happens. Yeah, and I think Granados is is a tough guy. Like we've got to give credit to to him. Like what he's, the guys he's been in with in his career, and I think that's why it was kind of like the perfect matchup for for Conor Ben. Um, I think now matchmaking gets a lot harder, as you say. Um, like, where does he go from here? Because there's there's only, a, especially in that welterweight division, I know I spoke about it so many times, it's kind of like, once you get to that top, like, six or seven world guys, there's not an easy fight in there at all. Um, so, obviously, looking forward, do you think Conor Ben has the possibility of winning a world title? Yeah, I do. Against the right fighter, yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, 
like as I said before, like they're not, I don't think they're going to patch them up against Crawford or Spence in the next year or so. It's just not going to happen. Mm. But yeah, I think against the right, against the right opposition, I think he can win a world. I think he can win a world title. He's one of those, he's one of those, one of those fighters. Like I feel the same way about Chris Eubank Jr., if I'm honest. Mm. Chris Eubank Jr. against um, you know, Charlo, Golovkin, Andrade. I think he would lose against all those guys now, personally. Mm. But against someone against um Murata, the Japanese fighter, for example, it's a different story. I think could be that one. It's about it's about the style. I think it's, it's about the styles as to whether those guys can win world titles or not. But I do, yeah, I do I do believe Conor Ben. Well, I'm not look, I'm not I wouldn't put my house on it. I'm not saying mm. he's definitely going to, but there are other British fighters who are more likely to. But I think Conor Ben looks good. I think I think he can, I think he can do it for sure. I think one thing that like a lot of people forget is like Ben had very limited um amateur experience and he kind of came into the program and a bit like we're seeing with Campbell Hatton um a little bit uh, where we are kind of watching him learn and obviously he did have those um struggles kind of early in his career and I think if well, in those early fights I think a lot of people wouldn't have even thought he'd get to the point he's at now where he's actually fringe world level so I think we do have to kind of hold back a little bit on Conor Ben not I, I agree with you I think he'll win a world title um in his next two or three fights. But I think he does still need kind of another Renardos in his next fight, like someone like that level who's been in with the top guys, who's caused the top guys kind of some problems. And again, we can kind of see where Conor Ben's at. Um, I don't think, I do, I do think he wins the world title, but like not in the next fight or even or even the fight after that. Well, I know, I've, I hope you don't mind me switching switching the script to and asking you a question. But um... yeah, no, no, fine. One fight, one fight, I think would be amazing. And it's been spoken of as the Adrian Broner fight. Mm, I think and that's kind of like a perfect. Yeah. Fight. Oh, man. If that, if that could happen, that'd be great. And I know Sean Porter was mentioned again. And I think those kind of guys where they're, they're a massive name, like Sean Porter and Adrian Broner hold a, hold a big name, but they're not, it's not the Adrian Broner of five years ago. It's not the Sean Porter of five years ago. It's kind of like, Matchroom like doing this a lot, and this is where they are quite clever. They kind of wait for these top, top names to kind of struggle a little bit and kind of fall past their peak, and then they let their young, like, up-and-coming fighters kind of get in them and get that name on their resume. Like, obviously, the, the one that comes to mind and the obvious ones, um, Joshua and Klitschko. Like, four years before that fight, there's no way Anthony Joshua gets anywhere near Vladimir Klitschko, even the Anthony Joshua that fought him in, in 2017. But we kind of waited for that perfect opportunity to put Joshua in with the name and which holds so much weight like Klitschko. Um, and I think that's what Eddie Hearn and Matchroom are really good at and does help to promote their fighters. And yeah, I'd, I'd love to see him. And I don't know if I'd want to see him with Broner next. I think it's quite risky um, yeah. just because we still don't, Conor Ben's still kind of an unknown quant quantity to a certain extent. Um, but yeah, Ben, Broner, and I'd do it in America again. Because yeah. you're not going to get people saying, I know we saw it last night again, saying that it's only the British fans that think Conor Burns any good. Um, yeah. But I think if he goes over there and, and knocks out Broner in early 2022 or, or beats Broner comfortably, I think then you are going to start to to get people a little bit onto the bandwagon that, that I am on a little bit at, at this point. And uh, I do think by the end of 2022, he has a world title. And that's just... And I yeah. think, again, I'm going to reiterate what I said in the preview. I think it will be Ugas again, who he fights, if Ugas still holds that belt at that point. Yeah, no, big, big statement. But no, don't necessarily, don't necessarily dis disagree with you. I think, I think the Ugas fight is the most, is the most likely one. Uh, so we'll see. But it's, it's, it's exciting. He's an, he's an exciting fighter. He's the sort of guy who's, his profile is getting bigger and bigger. Mm. And I think boxing fans don't want to miss a Conor Bend fight. Just because, as you said, he is an unknown quantity. He is explosive. He's in good fights. So yeah, no, it's it's per it's perfect. Yeah, and last night isn't the fight where he's going to win over a lot of fans. But in terms of his development, I think it was probably one of the more important fights in his career. You don't really want to get to that world proper world level fight having knocked everyone out because I think then you're not quite you're not ready and you're not. If someone takes you into deep waters, like you're kind of learning then in the world title fight, in the biggest fight of your career, you're having to kind of find out about yourself. Whereas like going into deep waters with the guys like Granados and then I presume in his next fight, it'll be quite similar against a really tough guy. He's been at that kind of level. Again, you can kind of learn about how you deal with adversity and, and getting 
into the the 10 to 12 round range yeah uh, absolutely so then obviously i which i think was fight of the night um and the best story of the night maxi hughes uh beating strathon by a pretty very comfortable uh unanimous decision um just how much did you enjoy that fight yeah no it was great it was great it was great to see i think it was great to see maxi hughes like once again um get kind of written off by some people and yeah just kind of just completely shut them up really it was a, such a i couldn't believe how dominant the performance was i th- i looked and thought max hughes has a great chance of winning the fight but it's going to be tough he's going to he's going to maybe face a fighter the fighter of strathon's standards he's maybe not come not come up against for a while um no it's just fantastic man i think he's someone who's just continues to improve fight on fight and it's great to see that and i think it just shows you you can suffer losses early in your career to perhaps not very not great fighters and it doesn't mean that that's your level um yeah so yeah no it's just fan- just fantastic man i think so you're discussing off um off camera i think i would just love to see i think i would just love to see him have a big fight now i'd love to, i'd love, love to see him just kind of his name up in lights in in america or maybe staying at home or something like that. But I think he really deserves that. There's few British fighters who I'd like to see have a big uh, a big fight in America more than, than Maxi Hughes. Yeah, and I think I've got two points on this fight. I think the first one is we kind of kind of have to now stop calling Maxi Hughes a Cinderella man. When you put on four <laughs> back-to-back performances in the way he does, beats John O'Carroll, beats Strafon, beats Paul Harlan Jr. Like, now he's not a Cinderella man. He's he's just very good. Like, at what point is he? Do we forget about the Liam Walsh fight and and the loss and the other losses and kind of just respect where he's at in his game right now? And he's and he's. I bet by his own admission, he's at the peak of his career now. Um, but we kind of have to stop calling him a Cinderella man and getting shocked when he puts in in the performance he did last night. And um, I know I'm a big backer of of Maxi Hughes. I said it in the betting show. Said it in the preview show, but. Um, and the fights that he's going to get into now are tough. And do you think he's at? He's kind of built himself up now to a point where he could headline a a zone fight night. Uh, big, yeah, maybe big. I think that's. Uh, I'd like to see him do that rather than just be on another Josh Warrington undercard. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's. I think that that's what I would like to see. I'd like to see him on that on that on that big stage now. And I think it's time. I think he's, you know, I think he's had what thirty. 30-ish fights now, been around been around a fair amount of time. He's won various titles. I yeah. think now's the time for him just to be in the biggest fight possible. Mm-hmm. I think that's the route I'd like to go him down. It's not about, oh, can you win that fight? Can you win this fight? What about this guy? It's about right, what's what's the biggest amount of money that I can that I can receive? And I'm confident he could step up, possibly come up short and then and then come again. I think he's that he's that he's that he's that he's that sort of fighter. Um but yeah, just a fantastic performance, and yeah, just I think big, 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 big fights await him. To be honest, yeah, I know I'd love to see him kind of headline maybe a an arena, maybe the football stadium in Doncaster, kind of like because that would be like the crowning jewel on his career. I think like that's the big night that everyone looks towards, and and having it in Doncaster as well. I think like for most boxers growing up, that's the dream, and. And for him to have achieved that, and it's because he's put in the work and got the performances he has over the last four fights where he's kind of earned it now and he's earned that big payday and he's earned the opportunity to kind of test himself again. Um, and I think whoever he fights, he's got a chance. Like, do you bet, do you bet against Maxi Hughes at this point? Like, how can you? Uh, it obviously depends on the opposition. Like, if it's Devin Haney, obviously we're going to... I don't think many people are going to back Maxi Hughes to the hill. Um, you're not, again, going to put your house on it, but... Would we be shocked if he pulls off an upset against one of these world level guys? I don't think I would be, um, mm. just because of the kind of the grit and determination and and the performances he's put in. Um, my second point on this fight was kind of like, I think Strafon looked at it as a as an easy fight a little bit. Um, I think when James Tennyson obviously was talked about in being in in world title contention in the next few in his next few fights, and Strafon obviously dealt with him in the first round, and I think he thought it'd probably be a similar if not easier night for him. Um, and then to be met with the the level of performance he got met with, I think he was he looked a bit a bit stunned and he couldn't really touch Maxi Hughes much. And if anyone looked like getting the stoppage, it was Maxi Hughes. Um yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I, I thought I thought he was I thought he was going to stop him halfway through the fight. I thought that was mm-hmm. going to happen. But um as they say like styles make fights and 
st- for if your staff run to have someone kind of coming at you like James Tennyson did, being happy to trade, then that's perfect. You can do that. But when someone like Maxi Hughes, who's just a bit kind of a bit slicker and a bit smarter, maybe it's not right for you. And I think that showed because he's gone from beating James Tennyson in a round to lo- to losing pretty much every round against against Maxi Hughes in in, conse- in in consecutive fights. It just really shows you how much how much stars can re- can 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 really make fights. But um, yeah, but no, it was, it was just a perfect performance by by, by Maxi Hughes. Yeah, and I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but that is where that prediction came from with the Maxi Hughes, just because of the, the two styles. And I thought he could frustrate um, Strathon a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. and that kind of obviously proved true. Um, so, yeah, again, I think that was easily fight of the night, story of the night. And I think um, if that fight hadn't have been on this card, I think we'd have been talking about a pretty disappointing... We already are talking about a pretty disappointing evening, but I think we'd have been even more. And I think this was the the beacon of light in in the dark card that we got last night. Um, so then finally the the last card of the of the main card was Ebony Bridges picking up a, a unanimous decision victory. Um seen a little bit of like contention about this this fight. Um did you think she did enough to win? Uh not really. No. I um I'll be honest with you, I didn't I didn't I watched the fight, but I wasn't kind of I don't like scoring every fight when you're watching a show for like, mm-hmm. and you don't don't enjoy it as much that way. Uh, um look it was it was a close fight and she just got the nick so it's not it wasn't outrageous but it just i don't know I, i'm not sure it was that convincing i know she suffered an injury to her hand somewhere through the fight but yeah i just think she i think she was actually she was actually up against a decent fighter yeah it's fair play to her she wasn't like up against one of these kind of, she wasn't up against another bet Connolly who's got kind of like a losing a lo- you know a losing record i think from what I saw, she was actually up against up against someone on her sort of level, whatever le- you know, whatever level that is. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll see. I know she's had two two fights kind of very close back to back, so I'm not sure when we'll next see her in the ring. Especially but, with that injury as well. Yeah, exactly. So don't know. Will there be a rematch? I'm not. I'm not sure there'll be kind of the demand for it. Maybe, but yeah, it wasn't a wholly convincing performance. I didn't think, but. I think she was actually up against a better fighter than people than people thought she would be, to be honest. Yeah, and my only, and I think we've got to give credit to Ebony Bridges. I think the way she promotes herself and and she knows how to kind of uh, work it to the point where people want to watch her fight. And for somebody with what six or seven professional fights to to get to that point from a pretty unknown quantity when she came over to the UK to now people tuning in to watch her fight and and getting the kind of traction that she does I think we've got to give her a lot of respect on a kind of commercial level the only frustrating thing I feel about Ebony Bridges is kind of it feels like her whole career and I said this you I said this to you earlier it feels like her whole career is kind of based around Shannon Courtney at this point and I don't know if you are going to get that fight again um and obviously it was a great fight it it was a a tear up and uh but it does kind of feel like now Maybe it's because of the limited names in in kind of the the division, where every fight Shannon Courtney's mentioned five or six, if not more times, just on on the fight, and it's kind of getting a bit like if you're Ebony Bridges or you're her team, you kind of want to move away from this narrative now. Where yes, that fight might come around again, but you've kind of got to make your own way a little bit. And she's made her own way commercially, but I'm talking about in like the the actual fight game and kind of like getting good wins under a belt and then maybe that fight happens again in the future but I think having this like the blink is on and fully just looking at Shannon Courtney and trying to go Shannon Courtney and get her back in the ring I think maybe now it's kind of a point where we kind of need to go in a different direction yeah and I think that there are other fights other fights are available there are other Mm -hmm. boxes in the world outside of Shannon Courtney that every, every, every British could fight and in my opinion I think a good idea would be to go and win a world title mm. in another world title in that division, and then you've kind of you've got more to shout about. You kind of you bring a bit more to the to the game that way. So yeah, I think that's what she should do. But I don't think the Shannon. I think Shannon Courtney maybe has yeah maybe has other aspirations, and that, that aspir- other aspirations could be to win more world title belts. And if she can do that in a rematch against Stephanie Bridges, then I think that's. Then I think we'll 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 see that rematch early next year and possibly. But yeah, who knows? I think that don't kind of focus too much on one fight. They're both 
they've both got kind of time left in their careers to kind of fight other fight other people but it's what it is maybe i think i think shannon courtney also a bigger priority for her could be the rachel ball fight yeah, yeah. that's the blip on her record whether that fight happens we don't we don't we don't yeah we don't we don't know yeah and and for me ebony bridges has got herself into a situation now where she doesn't need shannon courtney anymore she's a big enough name to mm. not fight shannon courtney and still do well and as you say kind of she could build like go through the rankings now and still be on big cards like last night and and do well and probably make quite a lot of money and then obviously in the future we can come around to that fight again when she's kind of got herself into into kind of world title contention or when at a certain point you could get to a situation where Courtney needs to fight Bridges because of the name that Ebony Bridges kind of has in the UK boxing at the moment yeah 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 possibly yeah for sure for sure um I agree I agree it's um yeah no there's it's big there's there's fights to be made there's there's, there's business to be done uh it's just i think it's all just a bit all just a bit blurry now or just all just a bit um all just a bit unclear and with women's boxing i think you never you never know i think shannon courtney you know might might lose her next fight you don't know any bridges might fight someone else and then lose and then things things kind of change i think there's just mm-hmm. yeah there could be a bit a fair amount of activity and that kind of with those three fights in terms of rachel balls not fought for a while any bridges might not be fighting for a while so it's all a bit it's all a bit it's all a bit up in the air yeah and obviously finally hopey prize put in a, a pretty good performance uh get picking up the second round knockout um i think it was nice to see i think in these previous fights with the four six rounders that hopey prize has had and he's kind of won by unanimous decision it was nice to see him have that kind of power to to finish somebody especially early on and against the guy with a pretty decent resume yeah i think so i think um hopey, well, i think hopey prize is arguably the biggest the biggest prospect we've got in the UK as someone who's kind of as young as he is. Mm. I question who's as big I think he's 21. So I question who's yeah. as big a prospect as him at that at that sort of age. Um but no really big fan. I think it showed obviously went five fights without stoppage. And so it's a great to show me can can bang a bit and can bang can get someone out of there really 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 early in the fight. So no really impressive man. Really look another fighter kind of looking forward to following their journey and how much they step up in the next year or so. But yeah, he's got, he's got a great coach in Dave Coldwell, who he looked after um, with Matt Shroom. So no, I think he's in a really good place, man. I'm not going to hype him up too much. He's only had six fights, but no, I think he's I think he's in a really good place. Yeah, and I know I always say this on these shows, but when you look at Hopi Price, if you could build a boxer um, genetically, it probably would be Hopi Price. Um, so yeah, I think the sky's the limit for Hopi Price. Obviously, it's hard to say after six fights and he hasn't had a real big test. I know this guy had a good resume, but it was kind of a bit padded um, when you mm. actually looked at it, it. It sounded good at 16 and 1, but I think he showed last night he's far off a natural 16 and 1, one level. Uh, yeah. So I think that will wrap up the uh, the Lara Warrington 2 review show. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please do, do subscribe, whether that's on Spotify or YouTube or whatever you are watching or listening to it on. Uh, thanks again, Elliot, Elliot for your time. Uh, and we'll speak to you all guys later.